10, 11, 12 years later, I mean, you can't curse me. want to be one to get you both talking, talking about it. So, that's where it can take you if you've got enough practice and enough dedication, I guess. And uh, these two archers will know all about this. This is our uh, final match of the day. And uh, again, another archer who you know loads of battles. So I'll ask you about him in a minute, in a second. Wild, 149 uh, to 148 and a quarter. We have he then beat Steve Anderson, Anderson in representing to the United States of America, taking the, the field of play here. On target Shooting number gold two. and silver on target representing number two. The United States of America. Yeah, I mean, Steve compared to, Anderson. Yeah, compared to Braden, Steve is technically a newcomer. Um, he hasn't shot archery his whole life the way that Braden did. Um, Steve actually played a lot of. He played basketball in high school. Uh, and high school his opponent and college. joining us now on the field uh, of play. So, the archer who defeated Andreas Darum won 48 to 146 in the quarter. Before disposing of Sergio Pagni, 147 to 146 in the semifinal. At 21 years of age, the time. he joins us now on target number shooting. one. So, representing he's just as intense, Taipei, regardless of what it is we're doing. <laughs> so Shen Changshuan of Chinese Taipei is Steve Anderson's opponent, ranked number 77 in the world. So. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your Anderson, gold but, medal um, match. Both archers the have been out for the, the field matchup. already today, so they know the conditions, they know is Tommy what's at stake. And, and, uh, yeah, I'm sure both have been out here and made whatever adjustments they need to make between uh, their last match and now. So, so Steve's another guy that wears and if he's shooting one. good, it's entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> on Friday, when uh, you were getting down to the to the final stages of the, the eliminations, was, you were you were right at the extreme end of the field. The, the USA archers and came down and had a look, and you know he he shot unbelievably in in uh, nine. In, in qualification as well just yeah and he came he even missed uh official practice day he came straight from uh the u.s field nationals nine uh, he got here like 11 o'clock at night on uh the day before qualification nine so two nines for xiang Xuan of chinese taipei Nine with his first arrow for Steve Anderson. Nine. And another one. So both archers in the gold, but dropping a couple of points. Both of them shooting their arrows pretty much right on top of one another. Nine. Ten, but yeah, it looks like a ten, doesn't it? It's right on the line. Yeah, it's solid. Anderson as well, so shot for shot matching each other. All right, that first end is in the books now, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, looking at the nine, uh, it is Chinese that, I mean, Taipei Archer uh, shooting yeah, on target it's, number it's, one, triple nines for a sum total of a 27 uh, here. Steve yeah, Anderson so finding the 10 ring on five, arrow number three for a sum total of 28. One point the advantage here after those initial three arrows. Just a reminder that Steve Anderson qualified in a second with a 709 yeah, in the qualification I can, I can guarantee you the judge is telling him it's uh, uh, sky hooking or sky drawing where you're pointing your bow way over your head. In favor of the American Archer after the Most people don't realize about Steve is he's like six foot six. So it looks like he's sky drawing when really he's, if his bow went off, it's, yeah, it's just where his bow is at. It's, actually a foot and a half higher than everybody else's when they draw their bow back. <laughs> sure. Sure. Um, and it's an issue we've, we've had uh, people talk about it before because you want, you like during qualification, oh, so there has been a you know, when we're shooting on a normal competition field, you see a bunch of guys that are all about the same height, the you know, yeah. five foot eight, five foot nine. And all of a sudden, Steve's like a foot above everybody else. <laughs> That's why they put the guys at the end, dude. maybe. He's a big dude. He certainly is. He's a good head and shoulders taller than Rio Wild, isn't he? I was watching the medal presentations and there was a, yeah. there was a real little and large thing going on there. More than once I've been, you know, Steve's been third or second. Ten. Steve is still taller than I am. 
even though he's standing eight inches further down yeah. <laughs> below me. <laughs> so here he goes, Anderson. Ten seconds left on the shot clock. Ten. Down the goes into ten. That was a good, for, good shot for him. Steve, when he makes an absolute perfect shot, for whatever reason, it always lands at about one, two o'clock, and that's right where that one hit. So. Nine. Uh, nine for him. I think I'll be measuring that one too as well. It looked pretty close to me. Three tens for Chen Xiangxuan of Chinese Taipei. Takes him to 58. Eight. And eight for Steve Anderson. A little ooh from the crowd. And all of a sudden, it's a three point game. All right, so let's take a look here at the. Yeah, I mean, it happens fast, and Bobby can change fast too. So. And he won't be alarmed at this early stage. You know, he's, no. he'll, he'll be telling himself won't he, that how well he's been shooting all week. He's just got to kind of do what he knows. And he knows he's, you know, he's been, we've been traveling since uh, two weeks before the first World Cup in Shanghai, almost nonstop. So. We've been gone a while. You get to a turtle like this, and you're here for a week, and it's hot, you know, shooting all day. And, uh, it definitely wears on you. And that's, I mean, I'm not saying that's why you got Nate that in, but it definitely doesn't help it shoot any better. <laughs> for sure. So you're, you're not just, there's so many factors on this to take into account at a moment like this. You know, it's, it's your own skill, it's your opponent's ability. It's, uh, environment that you're in and, and as you yeah. say you know life on the road and uh, yeah. a, a long weekend of competition it's, it's about mastering all of those elements isn't it? yeah for sure we can definitely keep them going but uh, like i said steve did uh basketball in college so he dealt with the stress of doing school work as well as you know training for that and, uh, no. <laughs> Training for playing and traveling with all that, so. Been in that boat before. Nine. He looks like the sort of guy who could have made it pro football or pro basketball, depending on what he felt like. <laughs> He's a big dude, that's for sure. Nine or ten, too close to call. I wouldn't be surprised if a few of those arrows are upgraded, actually. I mean, they're... Ten! I That's certainly a ten. Thanks, Steve. I'll have a point in there. Nine! Run, but I think at least so one of those, one of those here arrows and is going to go up next to one. Arrow values. An odd call because the extra wall to target that line is not actually there. So the judge will have to kind of reconstruct the line. Usually, the judge is trying to mark the way if they can, but sometimes there's not enough evidence to give it to them. So. And there'll be archers' agents at the other end of the field as well, weren't there? So yep, to uh, pull an arrow to make it, uh, you know, just check to make sure everything's written down correctly and all that. So the scores are recorded the right way and the arrow can call them uh, the way that you can call them. So. For those upgrades, if we, if we get them now, still take the match to. You know, a, a two-point margin. So nine, ten, nine, second arrow did again. Oh, so we got. Number three, we did get those. We did get those upgrades actually. So eighty-six. So eighty-four is the margin. So Chen Changchuan of Chinese Taipei now in the lead. 
just over halfway, two more ends to go. And so Steve Anderson will shoot first this time. Whoever can figure their stuff out here in these next two ends, I think, uh, need the one to come away with it. Steve's down by two points, but uh, getting plenty of opportunities to jump ahead. Absolutely, and the time there is exactly what he needed to do in this situation. As you say, you've just got to take control. Ten! Ten from Shang Chuan. Shot sequence. No. For the arch from Chinese Taipei. So 19 each so far. Still two points in it overall. Anderson with his final arrow of this end. Ten. And a 10 for him. So 29 points. And he has 113. So eight will level the scores. Ten. Oh, that's another 10. So 115 uh, for Chen Xiang Xuan. And number four, and near perfection on both sides. Only three arrows four. left for and each and archer, and now it really does get serious, doesn't it? That two point advantage. Well, you can live with it maybe in ends three and four. Now you need to, now you need to press the accelerator. And and now yeah, I'm not sure. You know, Steve, you make three good shots. I hope that the hangers you can get to make you know, make some mistakes and get some stuff back. So. Well, he's an intimidating uh, figure on the on the line, actually, just by his size. Isn't he? And, and now he's playing catch up in the match. He'll shoot first in his final set. Maybe that's a little bit of an advantage. Yeah, um, it definitely adds to the pressure of being in the lead. Um, but if this uh, one can come out with two tens right away. Uh, you know, I feel like he's going to be pretty comfortable on his third shot to just hold it near the gold and execute a clean shot. So Steve has the opportunity to put pressure on, but... Nine! Nine for him there. He didn't look too happy with that outcome of that. I can actually hear like him. he was fighting a, a little bit. You can hear him telling, telling the arrow where to go. Get over and do that. <laughs> if only that worked. That's. Ten. Oh, there you go. He's back with a 10, Anderson. Ten. Another 10 for Xiang Shuang. Two X's as well. He's within touching distance. Anderson needs a 10 here. Nine. And it's a 9. 141, so Chen Xiang Xuan of Chinese Taipei needs a 7 to win. And it is a 9. And congratulations to him, the archer from Chinese Taipei, Chen Xiang Xuan, came through the field, beating Sergio Pagni of Italy on the way. And Andreas Darum of Denmark as well. So he disposed of some pretty special archers on the way to his gold medal in the Hyundai Archery World Cup Stage 2. Congratulations to him. He looks very, very happy. Part of the resurgence of archery from Chinese Taipei. They're doing brilliantly at the moment. And it is Chen Xiang Xuan of Chinese Taipei who takes the gold medal here in Antalya and a silver medal for. Steve Anderson to go with the score, silver that he won earlier on in the team match. The final score. And uh, what are you going to be saying to him when, uh, when you meet up with him in a few minutes' time? Well, I mean, he did shoot great all this week, and uh, it sucks, but it one, only takes one bad match to, to ruin a weekend. But Steve's pretty down to earth, and he'll know that. You know, he'll be